Hey, good morning, church. And thank you, Pastor Jared, for the invitation to uh, speak this morning. And thank you, every one of you, for being here this morning. You know, I truly believe that God has a great for- word for us. Already the Holy Spirit is moving. I believe He's already touched you uh, in that session that we had, a wonderful time of worship that we had. And I believe that God has even greater things in store for us today. Amen? I'm ready to look into the Word of God. I hope that you are too. If you are, go ahead and say, I am ready. Yep, amen. Now, for the past two months, we have been focusing on a theme which is on a God-fearing lifestyle. And already from the beginning, on the onset, we learned that a God-fearing lifestyle is about learning to fear God rather than men. And then in subsequent weeks, we learned that a a god Fearing lifestyle is a, a, a call to be to discipleship. It is learning that we have to trust God. It's learning to, that we have to be centered on the Word of God. And so by extension this morning, I will say that a God-fearing lifestyle also means that we need to have faith and trust in Him and not be overcome by our fears and our intimidating circumstances. And so that's why this morning... I believe that God wants to say to us that a God-fearing lifestyle is to be an overcomer. Say it with me, be an overcomer. Now this morning's message will be based on the passages found in the book of John chapter 11, verses 38 to 44. But before we read them, wherever you are watching or listening to this morning's service, can you please join me in standing up? as we are going to look to God in prayer. Thank you. Let's pray. Father, we come to you this morning. God, we are grateful. Yes, Lord, indeed, we praise and we worship you that we are able to stand in your holy presence. We thank you, God, that we can stand in heaven's throne room where you are. We thank you, Lord, that we can be in your sweet, powerful presence. We thank you, Lord, that we can receive from you And this morning, Lord, let our hearts be open. Let our ears be open, Lord. Let our souls be hungry for your word. Because, Lord, we desire the life that your word gives. So, God, I pray that even as we learn from today, you help us, God, to be overcomers in whatever situation that we have. Help us, Lord, to to live lives that are God-fearing, lives that will bring you honour, lives that will be glorifying to you. So speak to us and anoint my lips even as I bring this message today. We surrender this morning's service to your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. Now, what is an overcomer? What does it mean to be an overcomer? Well, I did mention that, uh, that we, God has called us not to live in fear. In fact, the Bible tells us that the spirit, God has not given us a spirit of fear, of timidity. And so, if God has not given this, us these things, I believe that God is therefore calling us to be overcomers of our fears and overcomers of things that are intimidating us in life. So let's talk a bit, a bit about what are our fears. Now, when we were kids, it's very easy. We were probably very afraid of the dark. Uh, we were probably very afraid of uh, monsters under the bed. We were probably afraid of the thunder. We were probably afraid of... Um, Different, different things. I know a really funny thing was that when I was uh, a, a, a primary school kid, and at that time there was this uh, ghost story going around about the hantu susu. I don't know if you guys know that, those stories, but because of these fearful stories about the ghost that resides in the school toilet, for the whole six hours when I was in school, I refused, absolutely refused, to go to toilet because of this fear. And so, Different things in life that frightens us causes us to avoid facing them. Maybe when you're uh, as adults now, we are afraid of other things. We're afraid of the unknown. We're afraid of death. Maybe for some of you, you are afraid of public speaking. Or for me right now, you're afraid of talking into a camera in an empty hall. But I trust that you are all listening to this Word of God and and that if you hear what I'm saying, that these fears are really, really real. But what are the things that, uh, that intimidate us? What are our current circumstances that intimidate? Well, currently, there's this pandemic. It's frightening. Things are totally out of our control. The economy is crashing. 
I'm afraid of losing my job. We have health concerns. Our marriages are failing. Schools are shutting down. We don't know what to do about our kids' education. A whole lot of things that are going on right now are completely out of our control. And so in such situations like this, fear and intimidation can be so rampant. So this morning, I believe that God is calling us to be overcomers of the things that frighten us and of the things that causes us intimidation. But what does it mean to be an overcomer? Well, the perfect example of who an overcomer should be, obviously, is Jesus. But when I look at the life of Jesus, I do not see Jesus as someone who's constantly running around, pursuing the next best opportunity. So an overcomer isn't someone who's constantly um, chasing the next promotion, who's constantly running after things that are the, the hip thing at the moment. But neither are overcomers people who are defeated, people who have given up to their circumstances, people who are so afraid of living life. So this morning, an overcomer is someone who is centred, the person who is centred right in the purpose and call of where God has called you to be. Jesus is the perfect example of a man who's centred right in the purpose of God. So an overcomer is not someone who's constantly running around keeping himself busy. An overcomer is not someone who's hiding at home, afraid of the situations that are going on around him. An overcomer is someone who is centred and focused right where he needs to be in accordance to God's purpose for his life. So we are going to learn how to be an overcomer through Jesus. And specifically, as we look to the book of John chapter 11, we are going to learn how to overcome in the lives of three siblings. The passage we're going to look is probably some, a passage that we are all very familiar with. It is the, uh, the story of Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. So the book of John chapter 11 gives us a background of their story. Let me, let me just share with you what's going on. There is a woman named Martha, her sister Mary, and their brother Lazarus. And they lived in a town called Bethany, which is not very far away from Jerusalem, probably less than three kilometers away. We are told that Jesus loved these three. Every time Jesus would minister in the region of Judea, he would come and stay in Martha, Mary, and Lazarus' house, where Martha would feed them, give them lodging, Jesus and his disciples, and where, where they would be able to sit and fellowship with Jesus. So we're told that Jesus loved these three. Now one day, Lazarus fell deadly sick. He was so, so sick. It was a frightening circumstance for the entire family. Naturally, the sisters sent a message to Jesus, Lord, the one whom you love is very sick. Please come. Please come and help him. But surprisingly, after receiving this message, Jesus decided to stay two more days wherever he was. So Jesus was ministering on the other side of the Jordan River, which was a distance to, uh, before he would reach the little town of Bethany. It's surprising because if Jesus loves these siblings, as we are told in the Bible, he would have hurried into their situation. But Jesus does not do that. Eventually, after two days, he makes his way to the town of Bethany. And when he arrives there, it was too late. Lazarus had already died. And the sisters were weeping and in complete sadness. After speaking with the two sisters individually, Jesus told them to bring him to where Lazarus' body was laid. And now we're going to read the passage in verses 38 to 44. And as we read these passages, let us pay close attention to what Jesus says. And in the things that Jesus says, we are going to learn how we too can be overcomers over our fears and our intimidating circumstances. 
John chapter 11, verses 38 to 44. Jesus, once more, deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time, there is a bad odour, for he has been there four days. Now, I can imagine that this situation and this scenario was probably Martha and Mary's worst fear. Not only had they just lost their beloved brother, but as unmarried women back then, in a very male-centric world, they also, it also meant that Martha and Mary, would, who relied heavily on their male relatives, would have lost their source of covering, protection, and their source of income. For these women, not losing a loved one was bad enough, but it also meant certain, very uncertain times in the future. They had every reason to feel fear. They had every reason to feel intimidation. They had every reason to feel overwhelmed. But for the time being, there is time for them to mourn. There is time for them to grieve. For now, the, their reality was hidden behind a stone. But Jesus says to Martha, take away the stone. Take away the stone. Now, it's interesting to me why Jesus said, says this. Because we know that in Jesus' own resurrection, He didn't need anyone to remove the stone. No big old rock is going to stop Jesus from performing His miracle. And yet, in the passage we have read, He tells Martha, take away the stone. Jesus wanted G Martha to face the reality that is before us. To be an overcomer, my brothers and sisters, God wants you to take away the stone. He wants you to face your reality. He wants you to face your fears. Identify them. Stop making yourself busy running around to distract yourself from your reality. Stop making excuses in order that you can avoid facing your real fears. Really, what are we so afraid of? Are we afraid that if we stop being busy and keeping ourselves occupied, people will realise, actually, I have no idea what I'm doing with my life. Are we afraid that we've stopped putting on a mask, that if we stop joking, stop making silly jokes, stop making people laugh, people will realise that we are very lonely inside and we are slightly depressed. Now, I don't want to put down or make light of these fears. In fact, the fears are very powerful. Fears have, have uh, paralyzed people from living life. Fears have driven people crazy and insane. Our fears have a powerful effect on our bodies. And that's why God wants us to be overcomers by identifying those fears. Are we afraid that we won't save enough for our retirement? These are real fears. Are we afraid that we won't be able to support our families? Are we afraid that our children won't make it in life? Or something that is very personal to me. I am afraid that something bad would happen to my children. Are we afraid that we would suffer a chronic disease and, and, the, and it will rob ourselves of a quality life? Are we afraid, if you're students, that you won't pass your exams, that you won't get into the university of your choice? Are we afraid that the friends that we have held so dearly would betray us and leave us? Are we afraid of being alone? Are we afraid of never finding the right one? Perhaps we're afraid of never being able to, to get married, that we have to live alone for the rest of our lives. Maybe we're afraid that in this current situation, I will lose my job. Or you're afraid 
that you, are, you might get stuck in a very unfulfilling job for the rest of your life. What are your fears? What are your fears? Now, in the Bible, King David, who was a mighty king, who was a mighty warrior, he himself was admitted that he had a lot of fears. But in the book of Psalms, he writes that he prayed to the Lord and God answered him. And he freed him from all of his fears. This morning, we need to remove our stones. We need to remove our masks. And God wants us to face our reality. Take away the stone and identify your fears. Because if you won't face it and you won't define it, then God is not going to help you to defeat it. To be an overcomer, take away the stone and identify your fears. Let's continue reading in our passage this morning. Verse 39 again. Take away the stone, Jesus said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad odour for he has been there four days. Then Jesus said, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? Now, I can imagine Martha's frustration. I can imagine her protest towards, uh, towards Jesus' instruction. But Jesus, Lord, duh, the, the body has been in there for four days. There's a bad smell. Obviously, Jesus, we can't remove the stone. What were you thinking? And I can hear these words as though they were words of mine. God, why are you allowing this pandemic to take place? God, we were just kicking off. Our church just managed to pay off, to pay off the, the, the building, the loan. We just managed to, to claim this building as our own. We just managed to, to, we are able to expand into other things. Why this pandemic now? But God, I have many mouths to feed. Why, why this happened now? My business is going down. It was just about to take off. How am I going to pay all my staff that I just hired now? God, I'm hurt. I have, I have children who are going through college. How will I pay their tuition fees? But God, these are so frustrating things. And these frustrating things that bothers us are very real. But you see, in response to, to Martha's response, Jesus said, Don't you believe? Don't you believe, Martha? Jesus was trying to perform a miracle. But Martha was focused on a bad smell. I'm going to say that again. Jesus was trying to perform a miracle, but Martha was focused on a bad smell. Can you see how funny this kind of situation is? And I believe this is what God is saying to us as well. Are we so fixated on our problems? Are we so focused on the things that troubles us, the things that frustrates us in this life? that we do not see, we fail to see that God wants to do a miracle in your life. And as if to add insult to injury, you know, earlier on, the passage says, Jesus loved Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. And yet, even though Jesus loved Martha, Mary, and Lazarus, He waited to days. I can hear Martha's pleading as if they were my own. Lord, if only you had been here, if only you had been here sooner, my brother would not have died. But Lord, if only you would heal me of this chronic back pain, I could serve you with my whole strength. Lord, if only my daughters would sleep through the night, my life, my brain wouldn't be so foggy. I could be serving you in so many other areas. I could serve you better. I could give you my focus and attention. Lord, if only you had allowed my business to take off. If only that contract would go through, 
I would give you so generously for the furtherance of your kingdom. God, if only my children were smarter, if only my children were more independent, I would be able to serve you, I would be able to submit to you. If only, if only, if only, then I. These things are such real frustrations for Martha's life. And they are such real frustrations for us as well. But Jesus does not address the small problems. Instead, in response, Jesus says, don't you believe? Don't you believe? And so to be an overcomer this morning, we need to believe that God is able. We need to believe that God is sovereign. And that we need to submit all of our small problems. Submit our frustrations to Him. If we're only focused on our frustrations and disappointments, then we will miss out on the miracle that God wants to perform in our lives. Our circumstances may seem out of control, but God is always in control of every circumstance. He is sovereign, and we need to learn to trust in Him. The Bible tells us, trust in Him with all your strength, and lean not on your own understanding. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, submit your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. My brothers and sisters, what are your frustrations today? Learn to submit them to God, because God, God is sovereign. Don't you believe? Let's continue reading the passage. We come to verse number 41. So, they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! And I want to put in a dramatic pause right here. Can you feel the intensity of what's going on in this story? Can you just sense the anticipation that is going on? Martha and Mary standing there. Their beloved brother died four days ago. Martha Mary in complete distress, overwhelmed by the uncertain future, overwhelmed by the fear that has engulfed them, completely anticipating what is going out going on and we are waiting to see what happens you know brothers and sisters i want to speak into your life as well you see sometimes our miracle is going to take time and you see it's so interesting that they took away the stone it says that they took away the stone and that means that we, we are required to act in faith so you and I need to act in faith as well. Whatever that means, we need to take away the stone. Whatever it is, we need to identify our fears. Whatever it is, we need to submit our frustrations and our problems to God. Whatever act of faith that is required of you, we need to surrender and submit to our sovereign God. You see, it looked like Jesus was too late. It looked like to Martha and Mary, Jesus, if only you had been here. It looked like Jesus was not on time. It looked like their beloved had died. Today, this morning, what is something that you feel God is too late? What is something that you have thought that has died, has gone in the past? Perhaps God had given you a promise, but it seemed to have passed. Perhaps God has given you a dream, but it seems to have gone away and you've let it die. It looked like Jesus was too late. But God is always on time. God has a plan all along. Jesus' decision not to heal made way for an even greater miracle. So we may be focused or fixated on our problems. Jesus, why did these bad things happen in my life? We may be focused on these things. But Jesus' decision not to heal is going to make way for an even greater miracle in your life. 
Martha and Mary wanted a healing, but Jesus gave them a resurrection. And so this morning, where do you need to hear Jesus say to you, Lazarus, come out? Where do you need to hear Jesus, God, saying to you, your faith, come alive. Don't you believe that God is sovereign? Come alive. Take away the stone and trust in me. Don't you believe that God has a plan for you? For I have a plan to bless you and to prosper you, to give you a hope and a future. Faith, come alive. And so this morning, to be an overcomer, we need to trust in God. We need to put our faith in Him. We need to allow Him to speak into our lives and we need to rise from our fears and our frustrations. Let us be overcomers in our life. And then verse 44, after waiting for that moment, the dead man came out. After all the anticipation, the waiting, the prayers, the pleading, the complaints, the crying out to God, the dead man came out. His hands and feet were wrapped with strips of linen and there was a cloth around his face. And finally Jesus says to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Take off the grave clothes and let him go. What do grave clothes, clothes represent in your life? Grave clothes are meant for things that are buried, things that are dead, things that no longer have influence on you. This morning, God is saying to you, take off those great clo grave clothes and be set free. Be set free. But God... I'm too scared to face what my fears are. But God, my frustrations, my problems are too big for me. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. And this is our golden verse for today. I have been crucified with Christ. And I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and He gave Himself for me. I may not be able to fear, to face my fears. I may not be able to, to submit my frustrations. But I have been crucified with Christ. And the life I now live, I live in the Son of God. My brothers and sisters, we don't need to face our fears and frustrations alone. Jesus lives in us. The Spirit of God now lives in us. And He is going to help you to experience that breakthrough. He is the one who's going to command your faith to come alive. He is the one who's going to command you to take off those grave clothes. And if we trust in Him, He is the one who's going to set us free. That same power, the Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead now lives in you. I do not rely on my own, but I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Be set free from your sins. Be set free from your fears. Be set free from your lack of faith. Be set free from anything that is holding you back from living the life that God wants you to live. Be set free so that you can see the glory of God and so that you can receive the miracle that God has in store for your life, for your family, for your business, and your future. Be set free. So that in the name of Jesus Christ, you are an overcomer. Hallelujah. Come on church, let's rise to our feet right now and say it with me. Declare it in faith. Declare it in boldness and claim the promise that God wants to give you today. I am an overcomer and it is not by my own strength, not by my own self, not by my own ability, but I do all things in the power of the Holy Spirit. I do all these things through Christ who gives me strength. I am set free because whoever the Son sets free is free indeed. Today, I am an overcomer. 
Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, we receive it. Yes, God, we believe that you have called us, Lord, to live lives of an overcomer. You've called us, Lord, not to be defeated by our fears or circumstances. You called us, Lord, to be centered in your will. You've called us, Lord, to be focused in, in the purpose that you've given to us. And so this morning, Lord, we ask that you call our faith to come alive. Call our faith to arise once again. Oh, let faith arise.